Thanks Hover for sponsoring today's video. You're stressed, you're burned out, you're feeling out of place, pounding on your keyboard, not really knowing what the hell you're doing. You don't identify with the people around you, their goals, their concerns, and it seems like you haven't really done anything worth mentioning so far, living life as if you were watching through a window. And let's be real, it seems like no one really gets you, and no one really cares about how you're feeling, especially in the workplace, where you spend most of your life. Today we'll be answering why is it important to improve mental health and what can you actually do to reduce anxiety and ground yourself while you're working. Unfortunately, most mental health issues can only be solved in a workplace if your employer takes the necessary steps to solve the problem. However, if this is not done, it gets increasingly difficult to go through a rough patch in your life. And although mental health in the workplace is nothing new, we still have a long way to go to actually fix the problem. The other problem is not everyone has access to the professional help they need. So developing the necessary coping mechanisms can be extra difficult when you're alone, especially if you have to spend 7 to 10 hours per day in a place that doesn't really pay any attention to what you're feeling right now. Although nothing really replaces working in a place that respects your mental health and going the extra mile in trying to seek professional help, there are a few things you can actually do to at least trying to make the problem a little bit better and trying to find out some coping mechanisms to help you along the way. And because this is a productivity channel and not the health channel, I'll not be mentioning the core principles you should always strive to maximize in order to change your health, whether it's physical or mentally for the better. So exercising frequently, improving your diet, and improving your sleep routine. As I have no authority to talk about health, I'll be skipping that, but know that you should never ignore these health basics if you want to be in a better place mentally. And also, it is in your best interest to seek professional help whenever needed. Grounding is a practice of feeling more connected with yourself and your values. It's like finding a cozy place inside your own head through the practice of certain activities or by reliving certain thoughts. For people who suffer from anxiety, keeping a solid ground in practice can make a major difference in your lifestyle and help you quiet down distressing thoughts. Grounding can be rather difficult in an office environment as there's always a limited amount of activities you can do while you're working next to your colleagues, to your managers, and everyone surrounding you. However, there are still some things that are compatible with the office environment and can help you ground yourself during the day. Personally, I think breath work, a short walk in the middle of the day, listening to a curated playlist, and drinking a nice cup of tea are all things that can anchor you and provide some structure to your day. The 54321 method is also something that helps you stay grounded and is easy to replicate in any environment. When anxiety levels start rising and working backward from five, try to list things you notice around you. You might start by listing five things you hear, then four things you see, then three things you can touch from where you're sitting, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And if everything during your working hours feels difficult and feels stressful, then try at least to find some solace in the tiny individual moments you have for yourself throughout the day. If you're a natural introvert like me, being in an environment full of people for several hours per day can be excruciatingly painful, so try as much as possible to save time during the day for small moments that are only yours to enjoy. For instance, taking yourself out on a lunch date is definitely something you can think about enjoying in your work routine. In the same way, tailoring your day to implement 10 to 15 minute breaks where you can be alone with yourself can go a long way in ensuring you can collect your thoughts, process the events of the day, and prepare your mindset for whatever comes next. It's usually said that the first step towards good mental health is acknowledging your negative emotions, your negative thoughts, and any kind of negative event surrounding you. Only when you work through those feelings, you'll be able to find the necessary balance and really understand how they're affecting you and what kind of strategies and coping mechanisms you can try to find to deal with those emotions. At the same time, holding on to negative emotions causes a downward spiral as they stop us from behaving and thinking rationally and affect our lives negatively, so striking a balance is really important. 
Once again, the techniques you develop to improve your mental health can help you find the tools you need to make sense of those feelings. Cognitive restructuring is usually associated with stress relief. We usually develop an internal dialogue that makes us evaluate situations, people and events in a particular way. And if we are in a negative mood or have been influenced by toxic people and environments, it's normal that the internal dialogue leads us to interpret things under a negative light too. Jumping to conclusions, emotional reasoning and all or nothing thinking are all cognitive distortions that we're prone to make. While it's something that you don't learn to recognize on the spot, being aware that it exists and familiarizing yourself with the concepts will help you spot those distortions in your own thought pattern as they happen. And that recognition is actually very powerful. When you understand that your perception of reality is flawed, you'll start really questioning the way you're feeling things and whether there's actually a solid reason for you to feel the way you do. When you are inserted in an environment where there's little you can control, such as your work environment, this kind of shift in mindset and your perception of reality can really help you accept things a little bit better and if you're not accepting things, at least work through the things that are happening to you. But it's important to not always accept everything. You should also think about practicing assertive communication. Crises and bad times are always great moments that help you evaluate whether your life is going in the direction you want it to go. Allowing yourself to evaluate what's going on and what are the triggers of your negative emotions can have a huge impact on how you live your life and the current status of your mental health. Assertive communication is the practice of being appropriately direct and honest with other people while also clarifying your needs. So instead of avoiding conflict all the time to the point where you're just absorbing all the negative emotions surrounding you, try as much as possible, and I know it is hard, to communicate some of your perception of those feelings, the way you're managing your emotions, because that can lead to an actual breakthrough. However, of course, all this can fail. And of course, that despite us trying to adopt some techniques to manage these negative emotions and a toxic environment, sometimes we cannot get rid of the toxic environment and sometimes these coping mechanisms really don't work. So another thing you can try to do is to externalize your thoughts to yourself via journaling or prompts. Journaling is a typical choice, but there are so many options now that help you have a more mindful approach to your mental health without requiring long dissertations in paper formats. For instance, you can use a mindfulness app like Stoic. Stoic includes daily reflections, writing prompts. For instance, when logging into the app, you can write affirmations, do an emotional check-in and take notes, and even, of course, journal freely. And maybe you're like, oh, this is all easier said than done. I know. You can't solve mental health issues in 24 hours. Unfortunately, it's really not that kind of thing that changes with the snap of your fingers or with you just waking up at 5 a.m. the following day or just trying to hack your way into it. It may take days, weeks, months, and even years for you to improve from where you are right now to the point where you wanna be. However, your mental health is also that kind of thing that changes with a compounding effect. As you create tiny changes in your lifestyle, and when I mean lifestyle, I mean, of course, your physical lifestyle, like the routines and the habits you have, as well as your perception of reality, your mindset and your relationship with others, you'll find that all of these micro changes add up and provide kind of a spillover effect that reflects positively or negatively in your mental health in the long run. For instance, when I was younger, I ran a couple of blogs that really helped me externalize my feelings and connect with some people that felt the same way I did about reality. If starting a blog or website is something that you believe would help you, one thing you definitely have to do is buy your own domain, and Hover can help you with that. And even if you don't need a full website, you can just set up a custom email account. Hover is the best way to buy and manage domain names, and that's not only it. For instance, Hover Connect feature allows you to connect your domain name to many website builders with a few simple clicks, and they have more than 400 domain extensions to choose from. So if you're interested in any of this, just visit hover.com slash Mariana and save 10% on your new domain. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.